I said, I'm armed. It appeared as though he was reaching for something. And I know he's got a lot of witnesses that are going to say a lot of different things. On my property, I've stood my ground. I feared for my life. Period. Okay. You can see that. Hmm? You understand we're going to need to be able to see the video. Mm -hmm. Shortly after midnight on February 13th, 2023, 21-year-old Garrett Hughes was celebrating Super Bowl weekend with his brother and some friends at the Conch Town Liquor and Lounge, a bar in Key West, Florida. After a few hours, a shortless and intoxicated Garrett along with his company stroll outside to the parking lot at the rear of the building. There he breaks off from the group, walks over to a lone corner, and proceeds to urinate on the side of the building as everyone else stood talking nearby. When Garrett turns around again, this man is standing behind him. 57-year-old Lloyd Brewer III. Now Lloyd is sitting in front of investigators, who are tasked with figuring out exactly what happened between the time Lloyd approached Garrett and the point where police were called. If you can, just start the, I guess the night that you, you were at Contown that night? Correct. Okay. Oh, go ahead and let me know. Tell me, tell me what you got. I was there for the um, Super Bowl. Okay. Uh, I was with um, my niece and her boyfriend. Okay. They left. I am now single, so I hung out for a little bit longer um, to see if maybe a potential suitor might show up. Okay. Nothing happened. I was ready to go home. The fact that Lloyd waited around the bar for a prospective fling isn't a pertinent nor necessary detail to include. This seems like an example of oversharing, where the suspect provides an excessive amount of detail in order to make it appear that they're being completely open and honest, when in reality, they're likely not. I noticed there was a lot of activity going to and from the back door, okay. as we have discussed in the past, yes. correct? Yes. So I went out back to just see what was going on. As you know, I am armed. Nature of my business, my property. All right. I went out back, and there was not one. It, this was not a drug dealer. I don't think. Just a guy, and he had buddies with him, and there were there were cars, but he was in between two cars. There were car, and there, there were people on either side, and I guess they were all together. Okay. I don't know. They hadn't come from inside the bar. I don't know where they came from. And he's pissing in the parking lot okay. and on the building. And I said, man, can't you just go in the, in, I'll be honest, can't you just go in the fucking bar and piss in the toilet? And we exchanged words. And as it progressed, he became more agitated and approached me. And I said, look, I own this. Stop. When he says, I own this, he means it quite literally. The Brewers are actually an affluent family, well known for owning large numbers of real estate properties across multiple states. Lloyd is actually the owner of the strip mall where the Conch Town Bar was located. As previously explained, he was there by complete coincidence on a social outing. He continued to approach. I said, I'm armed. It appeared as though he was reaching for something. This is a commonly used excuse in alleged self-defense cases. According to Florida Statute 776.012, a person is justified in using deadly force if he or she reasonably believes that using or threatening to use such force is necessary to prevent imminent death or great bodily harm. In other words, in order for a shooting to be justifiable by self-defense, the suspect must prove that the person they killed initially meant to kill or cause great harm to them first. Thus, they frequently use this flimsy excuse that they thought, for some reason or another, that the person had a weapon, even though they never saw one and never were given a valid reason to believe so. The first shot went off this way. The second shot went off up in the air. To the best of my recollection, he was already on top of me. It would happen that fast. Okay. There's no doubt I fired a weapon. Okay. Because they wouldn't let me wash my hands. Right. Yeah, we'll do that up there. 
It, 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 okay. it, it happened. All right. I immediately, once he was down, did not continue to assault him, set my firearm on the hood of a car, okay. awaiting the arrival of the police. I did not render aid because other people showed up to render aid. Okay. And I know he's got a lot of witnesses that are going to say a lot of different things. That's what happened from my perspective. Okay. But I can tell you, he was on me so fast that my second shot went in the air. Okay. It was that fast. Okay. It was on my property, I stood my ground, I feared for my life. Period. Did the altercation happen like on the in the parking lot itself or in the parking lot itself? Okay, so not in the bar. No, 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 not in the bar. But I'm saying like, well, were you in between the parking? In between the cars, so was that? Right, in between the in between the cars. Okay, right here. All right. All of that's a matter of fact. It'll. Okay. There's cameras everywhere. Right? Okay. So that all of that is a matter of fact. Okay. And then as he approached me, I identified. I own. All of this. Yeah. It's all my property. Okay. I identified myself as the owner of the property. I identified myself as being armed. Lloyd seems to think that the fact that he's the owner of the property somehow adds to the authority he had to shoot Garrett. However, in Florida, a person doesn't have to be on their property in order to exercise self-defense, deadly or otherwise. So if Lloyd really did shoot him because he felt threatened, then the fact that he's the owner of the building is consequential to what actually happened. He still right. approached and appeared as though he was going for something. Okay. That's... What did he tell you when you told him about what, like, what... It, it, we were going back, like, who the fuck are you? We were just going back and forth on this thing. And it just, I mean, that fast. Okay. Did it, go... it, it, was, it was not a long, drawn out process. It really wasn't. Because if it had been, then his buddies that were here would have, I mean, okay. had they all come in together and had been a fist fight, things might have ended differently. Garrett was actually not armed with any weapons at the time of the altercation, but the suspect doesn't seem to have the least bit remorse about shooting an unarmed man. He's still talking about it as if he did the right thing, putting a lot of emphasis on the moment that Garrett jumped on him, which only happened after Garrett was already wounded by the first gunshot. Lloyd is shrugging his shoulders at the fact that Garrett actually wasn't a threat to him, thus he's essentially dismissing the fact that he shot him for no reason. His feelings will surely change once he finds out the full extent of the damage he caused. But that dude was agitated already. I mean, you can test me for drugs or whatever, I don't know. I, I, I swear I hope he's okay. I, 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 I hit him in the abdomen. I don't think I hit him with the second shot, because the second shot went in the air. When the altercation happened, um, that you all came together, was there any contact with you on him? Did you grab him? Did he grab you? Did Was there any uh, hand contact? Not to my recollection. Okay. It, 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 it happened so fast, but when somebody's coming at you that fast... I got you. It doesn't, got you. It doesn't matter. All right. Now, if we're going to get into very minute particulars, that's what I'm going to ask for a lawyer. Okay. Because I'm, I'm telling you the overall scope of what happened. And the reason I ask for you is you understand the dynamics of that establishment. Yes, I do. And you, so you know I'm armed all the time. Nature of my business and what goes on back there. And really all I was doing was walking through here to see what was going on to give you okay. a call if something was happening. Not wanting to go into specifics with the detective is an unusual reason to request a lawyer, especially if someone genuinely doesn't believe they did something wrong. However, in this case, it would probably be best for Lloyd to request a lawyer. The circumstances are such that he truly doesn't know whether he's in the right or the wrong. Thus, he really has no idea whether or not he's digging himself into a hole right now. And you always tell me people have been doing stuff back there. We've got a good I don't, and, relationship. And, and, and in all honesty, I don't think these were, I don't think they were dealing with anything. I think they were just drunk guys. Okay. They're, they're local, I think. All right. Um, and I can tell you, one of them's probably going to try to kill me right. based on 
Did they say anything? Uh, the only basis Lloyd has for this accusation is a dirty look directed at him by one of Garrett's friends. But where their friend just shot and gravely injured, most people would have more than just a mean look for the shooter. By bringing this up, in addition to repeatedly bringing up the possibility that the men were drug dealers, Lloyd seems to be trying to vilify the group in order to make himself look better in the situation. You walk and you walk out of Countdown, and you walk in there when you made when, when you engage yep. in, in the you know, and he zipped his pants up, and we had words, and he came at me. Okay. And I mean, there's no reason for me to go at a guy that's just pissing, other than verbally, just you know, really. Go to the fucking bar. They got three bathrooms. I got you. No. Um, and I, so I don't know. Beyond that, I, I can. I didn't know him. He had no reason to have malice for me that I'm aware. Of. Right. I mean, a lot of people know me. You know that. Yeah. No. I did not recognize him as someone that I'd run into before. Okay. But you don't, can't remember what he told you no, or anything like that? No, it, it, okay. it was all... I hate to say it, but you know, in the heat of battle, in the heat of the moment, words are exchanged, yes. Can I be verbally abusive? Yes. I can. But did, did I walk up and strike him to cause him to come at me? No. All right. Okay. No, no. Oh, look at my size. I mean, no. and, I, and my recollection is the guy was a little bit taller than I am. All right. Did he hit you? Did he strike you? No, he came at me in a threatening manner. Okay. And it appeared as though he was grabbing, reaching for something. Okay. But he was coming at me. Let's look back at the definition of self-defense for a second. Another stipulation of self-defense is that the use of force by the potential victim must not exceed the extent that the person believes that such conduct is necessary to defend himself or herself, meaning you can't necessarily bring a gun to a fist fight, both figuratively and literally. Lloyd might have had a reason to believe that Garrett would get in his face, shove him, or possibly hit him, and surely embarrass him, but none of those things present a danger to his life. So the crux of the case is, did Lloyd truly believe that there was a reason to fear for his life? I.e., did he truly have a reason to believe that Garrett had a weapon? Right. And did you did you see what he was like? No, what he was no, reaching no, at no. or anything like that? I did not. Okay. What do you, what right. do you mean by the threatening manner? Like what could be threatening? No, he's gonna have these words and yeah, like yeah, we're gonna have issues. Again, there's nothing said here that gives anyone reason to believe that Garrett was going to kill him. If he'd yelled something like, "Hey, I'm gonna kill you," or along those lines, Lloyd certainly would have remembered that and recalled it here. So it's unlikely that anything like this was said. I'm just trying to Do you remember it. where he was reaching? Like, was he reaching? It looked like in, on his side. Okay. okay. Which is where I carry a firearm. Okay. I mean, there, there was no reason for this. This was. It, Do you remember if you were holding the gun with one hand or with two hands? Me. Mm -hmm. Were you able to actually reach out properly? I don't know. I will tell you what the best of my recollection is. I'm sure it happened pretty fast. Two, one. What I hope comes out of this, I understand your job. And I understand friends don't cross that line for your job. I think this is a case for a grand jury. Oh, that's, that's what we're here. Do you know my job? Yeah, um, I think this is a case for an jury to investigate all the facts. This is something that we we get all the facts, we get all the we get everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We put everything together, and you know, and what I'm before we do anything, I don't want to go to jail tonight. But you know, I'm not going anywhere. So. He, take it to a grand yeah. jury. That, well, that's up to the state. Preston, that's, we, we put everything together, we take it to the state, then they make that decision. Lloyd appears extremely confident that he'll be going home tonight instead of the county jail. What he doesn't seem confident in is his own case, since he keeps suggesting that he'll need as much help as possible to get out of this. Revenge thing. This wasn't one of the dealers back there. It wasn't like I was hunting somebody. I got you. I got you. In no way, shape, or form. I got you. Um... 
You had gone to the bar earlier. What time do you think you got to the bar? We watched the whole Super Bowl. The whole Super Bowl? Mm -hmm. Okay. How many drinks do you think you might have had? Uh, probably three. Right. So am I spending the night at uh, Rick Ramsey's? I don't know. We're gonna. This, this is what we're doing, and I'll be perfectly honest with you. Um, we're gonna put everything together. Your story, their story. Um, that it's, we'll, it's we'll one take of me it. and probably five or six of them. And that and that's fine. We'll. It goes to the state. We tell them what what we're gonna do, and. They'll make the decision of how they want to proceed. If they're going to take it to grand jury, if they're going to. You know, anyway, way, we just, we just, and you know how we operate. By telling Lloyd, you know how we operate, the deputy is effectively shutting down any expectation Lloyd has of leniency or special treatment. Whereas before he thought he was going home, he's now questioning whether that would be the case. During the interview, he likely had an opportunity to reflect on the situation himself and found that he actually didn't have as much reason to act as he thought. We can see cracks starting to form in his cool facade as his mind begins to race. So based on what the state assess, we'll give them both sides, we'll give them, and they'll make a decision. Um, and you'll be, you'll know. So right now we're just putting everything together. And so, so here's what I would ask. If, if you want to hold me for whatever reason, Give me three or four days. Here's why. I'm a one-man shop. I've got to pay estimated taxes. I'm the only one that can do it. Okay. I've got to be in my office. I don't care if you come and sit with me to make sure I don't go anywhere. Right. But I, I've got to be able to do that. Again, the suspect is treating the matter as if he didn't just potentially take the life of another person. He truly believes that his business, because it's large and lucrative, should come before the officer's possible murder investigation. Well, unfortunately for Lloyd, the deputies don't feel the same obligation to his business as he does. And I'm going to tell you, I can't make that decision. That's not on me to make. But um, it's something that we'll have to talk to the state about. Would you consent to getting some book of swabs from you for um, DNA? No. Okay. You already have my DNA. Here we see more evidence of seeds of doubt starting to sprout in Lloyd's mind. His uncertainty is now manifesting as rebellion, as he's becoming less compliant and more fearful of self-incrimination. Does anybody else have access to the surveillance system other than yourself? For the parking lot? Uh, no, I need to get in there and look at it. Are you the only one that has the capability to do that, or is there somebody else that has that has access? There is somebody else, but I don't give you permission yet. Okay. You understand we're going to need to be able to see the video. Mm -hmm. He asks the officer to repeat his statement, then averts his gaze while giving a half-hearted reply. He clearly isn't thrilled about the idea of deputies getting the surveillance footage. As it would turn out, he'd have reason to want to keep it under wraps. Upon reviewing the footage, it showed Lloyd already reaching for his firearm as he stormed across the parking lot to confront Garrett for urinating on a wall. One that actually wasn't even one of his. Once Lloyd reaches Garrett, he pulls something from under his shirt and shoots him in the torso. This direct contradiction between the video and Lloyd's statement will surely be looked at very carefully when deciding his fate. Unfortunately, that's one of the few spots that isn't clear. Because I don't have a camera sitting right here. Right. Of course, there's no audio. It's illegal to audio. I would like to get in touch with my lawyer. I've asked three times and was denied the ability. When did you ask for that? When I was detained at the scene. Okay. And when I was downstairs. Okay. Um, who is your attorney? 
da nic. I'm not saying I refuse to cooperate. I'm saying I would like to confer with counsel. Sure. Okay. What does the gun shop residue show? What is that? Gun shop residue. That right now is not showing any it's negative on it. Yeah. And it could happen. It, it, sometimes these kids will show negative on it. Lloyd is really grasping at straws at this point, trying to find any reason to feel better about what's going on. Logically, absence of gunshot residue does not suddenly mean that he actually didn't shoot the firearm and that the case somehow disappears. The fact of the matter is that he did shoot the firearm and the presence or absence of residue isn't going to change that or make a difference to his case. After speaking for a bit longer, they then informed Lloyd that they got a warrant to do a blood draw and that they'd be transporting him to an area hospital from there but not before giving him the devastating news. Just so you know, I'm always up front with you. Yeah. With you. The hospital had contacted us a little bit ago. I just talked to the, the detective that was out there and the, the, the kid did pass away. So I just want to let you know that, all right? Um, unfortunate thing, but I, I gotta tell you. Lloyd was denied bond following a report filed opposing his release, citing his prior convictions and his family's wealth as reasons that he would likely try to flee if he were let go. As of the date of this video, he's still being held at the Monroe County Jail without bond. In June 2023, Lloyd was formally indicted for first-degree murder, which was initially a second-degree murder charge that was bumped after the discovery of the surveillance footage. He was also charged with a violation of a concealed firearm permit and aggravated assault for apparently threatening the victim's little brother with the firearm as well. His trial is scheduled to begin November 6, 2023. On top of serious jail time, Lloyd is also facing a heavy wrongful death lawsuit filed by Garrett's family in April.